Hey guys, Quiv, the Lazy Geek here, and today we're going to have a look at the Flat Wizard in Nina. And spoiler alert, I've just tested it, it's awesome, and I think that even people who use other software to control their equipment and their sequences might want to use it just to capture their flats. It's, it's that convenient. So first things first, you can see that I'm already connected to my equipment. I'm starting to cool my camera but it's not that super important for this video. I have my filter wheel connected, I have my camera connected and I have the telescope con connected and that's pretty much what I need. You can also connect your flat panel and uh, there could be ways to actually control the brightness of the flat panel in here but I don't think that the flat wizard actually does that automatically. So first things first I'm going to go into the flat wizard and we're going to have a look at uh, this option which is here slew to zenith. So I am going to say that I'm going to slew west of zenith and here we are the mount is moving I'm going to remove the cap and I'm going to get the flat panel ready uh, plugged in and on the mount so I'll be right back. And here we are we have the flat panel on the telescope the telescope is pointed to zenith and now we can start using the flat wizard so quick overview first you can see that at the top here you have very basic options like the number of flats to take which will be per filter and the number of dark flats to take so um, dark frames for, for your flats which i highly recommend taking which is also in this case per filter then you have the binning which is empty by default which means it will use whatever setting the camera currently has by default but i would always set it um, explicitly to whatever you want. Uh, most, of, most of the time I'm using one power, one time binning, so the uh, sensor information as it is. Then you have the gain of the camera. Again, it's set to zero by default, but I set it to my actual camera gain here. And then you have the interesting piece, which is single mode and multi-mode. Uh, single mode is if you have a single filter that you're going to use it. This would be my case with the L filter since I only this is an, a, a color camera and I'm just going to use the luminance filter with it. But we can have a look at the multi mode uh, as well. So they work exa in exactly the same way except that you see you have the single mode here where you can select your filter and then you can select all of all sorts of parameters here and the multi mode you can actually from the list of filters available from your filter wheel you can say which filters you want to automatically take dark uh, flat frames for and dark flats and then you have the exact same parameters within each of the filters so you can tune that. Uh, you can also choose to pause between filters if you have like LRGB for example followed by a narrow band so broadband followed by narrow band it's likely that you'll want to change the brightness of your flat panel before you go from uh, broadband to narrow band filters and so pausing between filters will let you do that. So uh, let me do a very simple example just on two filters so it doesn't take too long between uh, luminance and the red filter and uh, we're going to look at the options in each filter and you can see there is the minimum flat exposure time and the maximum flat exposure time the minimum by default is something like 0 0.1 and by default the, the max is something like 30 seconds it's not for me for CMOS sensors and one of the reasons I take uh, pretty long flat frames of roll over one second is because I've heard that some of the CMOS cameras, and it surely was the case with my 294 MC Pro, have issues with exposures that are shorter than one second or even two seconds. Uh, and that the, the results produced by the uh, exposure are not uh, consistent all the time. And so I want to keep my flats fairly long, so I'll put a minimum exposure of let's say from this camera it's fine to have short exposure so 0 0.5 and I'll put a maximum exposure of 5 seconds and again your, your mileage may vary it depends on the brightness of your flat panel it depends on the focal ratio of your telescope it depends on the pixel size of the camera and the gain uh, but I try to keep it between those two because I don't want to have, to have flat frames that are too long or too short and then there's the flat step size which is how slowly or how quickly the flat wizard will increment uh, its exposure time until it finds the perfect perfect exposure time that gives you exactly the, um, uh, the histogram that you're looking for. Now the histogram, talking about the histogram, we have the histogram mean target here and the mean target is basically like on which part of the histogram do you want the peak to be. 
and uh, many people put it at 50 percent um, I like to put it at 30%. In theory, actually, I think 50% is something is supposed to be better, but I am old and set in my ways. Uh, so I set, still set it to 30%. And you can see here, I have set it up to 30%. And there's this like mean target, like 26,000 here right now, if I put it back to 30%, uh, 19,000. This is simply um, the, it's called the number, the ADU number. It's basically, I ha this camera is a 14-bit sensor, but the camera itself and it's the same for all of the ZW cameras basically behaves as a 16-bit camera so from Nina's point of view it's a 16-bit camera so the value of each pixel can go from 0 to around 65,000 if I take 30% of that it's 19,000 something so that's why uh, that's where this number here comes from and then there's the mean tolerance, which is how tolerant I want to be regard with regards to the target. Obviously, Nina is not going to achieve exactly that target. So we're going to look at a range uh, that is here in my example from uh, 17,500 and 21,500 roughly. And you can change that percentage as well very easily. And I've done this for the L filter and you have to do it again for the red filter. Uh, I couldn't find a way to copy the settings from one filter to another. Um, so it, it needs to be done man manually for each filter. But I have the exact same setting settings here for the red filter. And based on that, I can really just start taking my flat. So you'll see that Nina will actually take many exposures one after another, increasing the exposure time each uh, time by this uh, 0.1 second um, flat step size that I have here until it reaches an exposure that get, gets me in the vicinity of this 19,500 target uh, histogram, the mean or the median of uh, the frame. So let me click on play it's now uh, switching to the L filter and you can see it started to take exposures and it's just you see, the mean ADU is here and now it's actually starting to take the flats it's taking the flats it's done taking the flats and now it's going to the red filter how fast is that how incredibly fast is that this is awesome and it found the right exposure time already and uh, now it's just going to take all of those exposures one after another. I love this. I love this. I, I don't know why I never used this before. I've done it manually uh, up to now. And uh, I think I might use this going forward. This is really cool, really fast, really easy. You can go through all of your filters like this. And I think it's really worth it for even people who do not use Nina as their main imaging program to just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, use this just for their flat acquisition. And now we are going to our flat dark. So we should cover uh, our scope and press OK to start taking the dark flats. So let me do that. And here we are. And I'm just going to say OK. And it's going to do it. Now, it might take a bit of time for the screen to refresh because now this computer here is actually sending back images to my imaging computer, to my processing computer downstairs. So the Wi-Fi connection is much slower. Sorry about that. Uh, if you're interested, by the way, in how this is done automatically, I have another video on that and uh, the link should appear right now. Um, okay, and now we are taking our dark frames and you know it's exactly the same exposure time as the flats for each filter and this is why actually you have uh, the dark flats that are done per filter because of course depending on the filter for the same target you'll get a different exposure time so you need uh, dark flats that are specific to that exposure time and this is what Nina accomplishes we took five flats and five dark flats per filter now of course um, in reality I would not take just five flats and five dark flats I'd probably take something like 25 uh, flats and I like to take something like at least 50 dark flats and the reason is that the dark flats uh, contain the uh, bias uh, pattern as well so I like having as many as possible and it's very easy and very quick to take uh, flat darks since the, the flats have very short exposure times and this is how is easy it is to just take flats for all of your filters like really super easily and we can have a look at the final result 
in my imaging folder, you have this OSC folder. This is something that I configured in the imaging properties of Nina. And we can see we have our flat folder, our dark flat folder, and here are my flats. And uh, here are, are my uh, dark flats. And I could open those in PixInsight. And we're going to debayer and stretch that flat frame to see how it looks like. And here it is. It's a beautiful flat frame. And I can even see the little donut that I had noticed in my manual flat frames uh, last time I had done them in a, a previous video. Uh, so, you know, everything worked uh, great. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else to do now. You can just put the dark flats into uh, the dark kind of pane of the weighted batch pre-processing pre script. You can put your flats into the flat pane, flat tab, and your lights into the light tab, and everything's going to be great. Of course, you'll also still need to take your dark frames manually for your light frames. Uh, but that's pretty much it this time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to that flat wizard. And uh, if you like this, if you find it useful, please like the video, please subscribe. And if you have any comments, uh, please leave them below. I'm always open to suggestions on to why you liked or disliked a video. And also, it's cloudy today. But anyway, don't forget to look up. See you.